Hey there, in today's session, we are going to dive deep into find out how do you price for your services? Should you even charge for your services, especially if you are a Christian entrepreneur and you're struggling with that, this video is going to help you tons. I have had countless conversations with Christian women who want to use their gifts to help other women get through challenges in their in their in their lives, but they're not sure if they should charge a certain at a certain level. They're a bit shy about charging a certain level and so I really want to help you especially using some biblical insights to really give you confidence to charge and to give you some guidance on really how you can think about charging for your specific services. are new to me I am Bookie Ekoa and I help kingdom women who are experts in their field to start to create five to ten thousand dollar a month as a coach or a service provider and to do so using biblical principles and biblical insights so they can have much more impact and leave a lasting legacy so if that is you you are in the right place welcome on here and let's get to this particular discussion so we're talking about pricing and i coming to you because I've heard it so many times you know I, I'm using the bible I'm not sure if I should be charging because I'm using biblical insights I've even had people people comment on some of the things that I put out there you know this should be free or using the bible and I'm like oh, lord help us with more understanding more wisdom you know the thing is we need to have biblical insight and truth because God's word he is his word right God is you know he came down in flesh and to the word of God is our guide to help us to know how to live and how to even to 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 charge our services like the bible has insight for everything like one thing I want to do in this channel if you haven't really browsed around is to really just expose how much of God's word is the origin of life and the origin of truth for success for great living just there's so much wonderful things in God's word and so that's my passion for this channel so um as long as you are that way inclined you're in the right place right so let's get to it so I'm going to start with the Bible because I did talk about the Bible just now. What I'm going to talk about very quickly is a passage in Proverbs 11, verse 26. And it's very simple. And it's just that we just don't think about these things or we don't necessarily know these passages exist. This was very new to me in the recent few months. So it's not like I'm telling you that you don't know the Bible. I'm just saying that, listen, God has got an answer for everything. So especially I know I meet people who may be, um, maybe you're a life coach possibly, and you're not sure about charging high, tick high ticket. I want to explain, I'm going to do, do another video at some point about high ticket versus low ticket, but I want to under, you to understand that your time is valuable and your time needs to be compensated at a level that you're happy with, not that you're going to charge and feel like, oh my gosh, why did I just charge that amount? Be happy with all the charge, price that you charge, sorry, okay? So Proverbs 11, 26 says this, the people will curse him who withholds grain, but blessing will be on the head of him who sells it not gives it away for free but sells it and the grain is the value that you have whether you are using biblical bible says yes freely you, you receive so freely give but it's in context of you know um preaching the gospel specifically right but if you are teaching and you are packaging what you know with the bible alongside your techniques alongside you know your 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 value add then you shouldn't have any problem charging because god says here that you know what you, you curse to those who withhold what they have if you have a gifting if you have experience in life that you are holding back and you're not selling it then that you know that's not a good thing okay let's keep it there right but you want you'll be blessed if you take what you have and you multiply it take what you have and you sell it so i'm not going to go into a whole preaching today but just for, the, for you to know that the Bible is very clear. And even if you look at look at um, um, Joseph, right? Joseph, when the famine came, he, before the famine came, sorry, he, he, he stored the food. And when the famine, he knew that he had been given insight that famine was going to be coming, right? And he was given the, 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 the mandate to oversee that whole process knowing that many people are going to be suffering but he didn't give it off give food away he sold the food right so you know god is so many things in the bible that talk about selling right so i wanted to just make you 
hope that helps you a little bit to know that you know what your value needs to be charged for now the question next, next question is well how do i charge how much should i charge what's the right pricing now this is specifically for coaches specifically now if you're a service provider what i would say to you is definitely just do market research find out what's happening in your industry if you're providing website design services bookkeeping services accounting services um you know whatever services that you provide go and just check out the market and see you know where you fit in there it's up to you to decide if you're a coach it's going to be very different because a coach there's no one like you you're unique in your own right so you may do something similar to somebody else but there's no one like you and so you need to look at yourself as an individual understand the market that you're in but look at yourself as an individual on what you carry and bring to the table and more importantly what results you help your clients to get so when you can like understand these things and you can weigh those up it will help you to like really get clearer on okay well how do I charge well this is what I'm going to charge right and even I always recommend and tell my students to always start with a price that you're comfortable at even if it's a bit low at first and then once someone pays for it hey presto it's in demand then you can increase like I regularly increase my prices to be honest with you um and I do that just because I know you know the I'm giving lots of value and I'm always giving it at a very reasonable price. So, you know, you can do that too. It's up to you how you do your own business. So let me give you some tips on what you, firstly, some tips and then some, some guidance on actual pricing on what I would recommend as a coach specifically, right? So firstly, you want to think about what are the resources that you provide for your clients, right? So do you provide extra resources that cost you money? Do you provide, provide resources that, you know, cost other people, your um some time of, of t more time from you or some more assets you have to buy or purchase think about whatever it is that you need to use to get your clients results do you have to actually invest in some resources or, or somebody else to get that output out to your people okay think about that think about how much money and time that you have have gained the skill and knowledge to be able to even get this far some of you have had Certifications, some of you have spent years in your industry with these techniques that you know and you understand and you you belittle those things. Like, you know, when um, Elisha asks a widow, <laughs> what do you have in your house? She said, I have nothing but a jar of oil. That jar of oil was super valuable to the extent where that, that jar of oil, she lived off the produce of that. So the thing that you think is like, oh, well, you know, I've, I've always known how to do this thing. Well, you may have known how to do it, but many people don't know how to do it. You can charge for it. So, so don't belittle your skills. I recommend what you do is just do a list of all the skill sets that you have, all the expertise that you have, all the experience that you have, all the um, qualifications or the certificates that you, that you carry. And just look through them and see, you know what, by the time you stack them up, you'll be like, well, actually, I've got quite a lot of experience here, you know, so it's not to be snuffed at, is what I would say, okay? Next thing also you want to look at is what testimonials or social proof do you have? Here is a big tip. Online, you really want to have testimonials and social proof as soon as possible. So if you don't have many of those, that could affect if you want to charge high, like say you want to charge high, I don't know, five, 10,000, right? It could affect it if there's no testimonials because they're like, well, I'm going to invest 10,000 in you and you, I can't see no social proof, right? Depending on what you do as well. So it depends on the market. I can't say for specifics, but 10K in your industry may be very, very low. So just, okay, I'm just kind of gauging this as a general, right? So if you haven't got testimonials or social proof, it's fine. I would not recommend you go and work for free to get them. I recommend you work at a lower rate to get them because people value what they pay for. And so you want the person that you're training to get results. Therefore, if they are invested in it, they will get results faster because they're paying for it. So don't go out there and give your services away for free. I would not recommend it. I would recommend if you have no testimonials, go out there, help as many people as you can, can in the beginning for a lower rate. And then you've got testimonials and now you can increase your price. Okay. I hope that helps. Now, also, also, you want to think about number five, what is the demand for your services? Like compare the market. I always encourage my students to always do market research. Like are people doing what you do already? That's a good sign. If they are, then pray presto, well, you've got something to compare it with, okay? Now, as I said before, don't compare like for like because you're not going to be somebody else. I would never recommend you do that. But I would recommend you have an understanding of the market that you are in, right? So different 
um, markets command different pricing, like depending on what you're doing, if you're a productivity coach, if you're a health coach, if you're a finance coach, if you're a business coach, if you are like, you know, there's so many different types of coaching out there, right? Look at your industry and look at what people are charging at the higher level, at the medium level, at the lower level, and look at, okay, you know, where you feel you can position yourself based on the things I've told you so far that will really, really help you. Another thing that's going to help you tons is your specialism. Please drop a specialism in the chat for me on the comments below. Sorry, right? Specialism is really, really important. And this is go, This is about you niching down. If you are too broad, if you help everybody, you help nobody and you will not be able to command a higher price. You need to be able to specifically say, I serve this type of person that will help you to charge a command a higher rate or you do things in a particular way that is quite specialized. I had a client one time and she did hypnotherapy um, for her life coaching. And it was for me personally, it was quite unique. I'd never heard of that at the time before. I have now, but even then it's quite specific. So if you have a specific way of doing things, a specific person that you charge, a specific um, you know, way that you, you show up for your clients, make that known because those things will help you to command a higher price because the people that love that thing will only want to charge what only want to work with you because you do it in that way that they like okay i hope that makes sense so you really want to like i cannot say this enough and i'll say it again you need to be specialized you need to niche down you need to like really carve out a market for yourself in the online space because the online space has got loads more people than your hometown um busiest road in your hometown right so carve out your ideal audience there okay now now you have all these things to think about right you can choose what feels good to you what you feel led to charge what you feel that resonates with you i mean i i i've come across people that maybe charge like say 300 or 400 dollars for a 12 week coaching program like in my personal opinion that is way too low what will happen is you're going to get frustrated because while well, you're charging so low for your time exchange and then guess what happens you're going to be looking for the next client the next client you're not you're not going to have time or energy or the investment to really focus on that person unless maybe you have another job somewhere else right that's fine but i still wouldn't recommend it because your time is valuable okay your time is valuable so finally here are my recommendations okay at the bottom half okay of the coaching spectrum right if you're new to the market i would recommend charging between 1500 to 15 1500 to 3000 sorry i'm going to 15000 yeah 1500 1500 to 3000 at the that's lower that's lower end high ticket depending and that's for one to one so if you're doing a one to one client um for i'd say um probably minimum of six weeks eight weeks what is quite common is 12 weeks it's up to you depending on what you do i would not recommend you do hourly because i would not recommend that at all because actually how much can you get done in an hour right do it by a transformation get them an end result that will help them a longer way you'll be able to charge more if you charge hourly it's like, oh, I'll, have, I'll give you an hour of my time don't exchange time for uh, don't take your time for money in that way exchange it for results and for the value they're getting so whatever they're getting at the end well that whatever it helps them to do then you can go out there and you know what charge whatever it makes sense to you to charge for you doing that okay if that makes sense right so what you want to do is start at uh, at least 1500 at the bare minimum i would say 1000 if you are doing one-to-one -one coaching minimum i wouldn't do any three figures for coaching Maybe if it's a half day intensive or something like that, it's a bit different. So here's the thing. When you're charging for coaching, it, you have to think about, okay, what's the time frame that's needed to understand? But more importantly, what is the outcome of our time together? You could have been a half day with somebody and still charge them like 5,000, 10,000 even, 3,000, whatever it is for a half day. It depends on what the outcome is. If the outcome is going to get them 10 times of that amount, hey, why not? I'm totally up to you, right? Now, what I would definitely say is to help you put more meat on the bone with that. If you are experienced and you are successful and you have got testimonials and success stories, definitely you should be charging like 3K above, 3K and upwards. So depending on your industry, 3 to 5K, I would definitely say if you are not providing financial results, 
um if you are uh so now let me be clear if you are providing non-financial results right there will always be a financial benefit that your client will still get from you still being a non-financial results coach if that makes sense so what i'll explain what that actually means is that, for example one of my clients she helps women to stop drinking alcohol right so people who are alcoholics or they drink too much and they really want to stop drinking it's ruining their family it's ruining their marriage it's ruining their relationship with their kids she helps them to stop drinking now it's not in a direct financial result however one that when they do stop drinking they are going to save money on alcohol directly number one <laughs> number two save money on a possible divorce right number three save money on probably uh, counseling or therapy from a breakup with their children. So there is definitely always a financial benefit to what you do, even if you are a non-financial result coach. Does that make sense? If you're a life coach, helping with healing and you're helping with inner work, that kind of thing, confidence at that kind of level, there's always going to be some kind of financial benefit that they're going to receive as a result of you doing it so um, don't belittle what you do because of that I don't think oh only business coaches I've heard this only business coach can charge high only business coach can charge high or financial coaches can charge high that is not true at all so I would say you can like around the two three five k level still be charging around that around around that is more than acceptable for you to do so and obviously it depends on you on the time frame on the outcome it's all relative right Lastly, I would say if you are a financial coach, now anywhere from three, five, 10, 15, 20, hundreds of thousands, you can charge if it's, if you're helping your clients to get a financial reward, a benefit. So um, I hear, you know, I do hear 10 times, 10 times um, return back. And for me, I don't, not necessarily do it that way. So what that means is, for example, if you can help me to 10x my revenue, right, then, you know, me charging you 10K, if I know that you could make 100K, is a no brainer, right? But I, I want to know that I'm definitely going to be able to get you 100K, which I think is definitely fair enough. But here's the other thing as well, like, it may not be 100K in that particular year, but it will be 100K over maybe like, say, I don't know, over two years, whatever, over three years even. But, the, but what you have learned from that from, from that experience has still got you to a much higher place than you would have gone to before, if that makes sense. Like I've invested thousands in coaching, 10,000, 20,000, whatever, whatever, in my own um, uh, development, right? But the reason I've done that is because I've always, always got a higher return back, always. Like, so, you know, if I pay 20K for you now, I'm making 20K plus months every single month. Wasn't it worth it, right? So my point here is that if you are offering services that help people to get a financial reward, then do not undervalue yourself and think about the lot bigger picture as well. So these are the different things I want you to think about when you are going out there charging your services don't be afraid to put a zero next to your next to your um figure um i i am sharing this from full transparency that i have gone through my own personal journey of charging too 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 too, too low and um even now I, my my prices are actually i feel like they're quite reasonable right so you know you do you do what feels good to you and most importantly do what god has told you to do if god has told you to charge low who am I to say anything? But make sure it's God's voice and not your own voice. And make sure that you don't undercut yourself because if you want to build a legacy, if you want to do build for the future and really be able to impact lives and help people, you know, you want to really value your time and value the experience that you have. I hope this has been helpful and I'm going to see you in the next episode. Before you go, make sure you hit the notification, notification bell. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and share it with friends and family people that you know that will be really helpful i really appreciate that and you will get lots of benefits as well so thank you for watching and i will see you next time take care and god bless bye-bye <music>